The most outward portrayed symptom I had was anger. Come to find out that's pretty common with men. Uh, a lot of male first responders there, it's anger because you're so confused uh, as to what you're actually feeling and that you're, that you're not able to process and that you're constantly juggling this, this fight or flight that a lot of it comes out as anger. But you know, with that anger comes a whole slew of other things. And for me, I had massive hypervigilance where I couldn't walk into a restaurant or any sort of other public building without head counting. Everyone that was in there needed to know where the exits were. And if it was somewhere where I was sitting, sitting with my back against the wall or at least the back of the store or the restaurant and looking at the exit. Or the flashbacks, reliving traumas in my life, whether it be professional or personal, these things were always up in my face. And, you know, a lot of, you know, these, the hypervigilance and the dreams and the, and the nightmares and the flashbacks, a lot of people didn't see. What people saw was the anger. But me dealing with it was not done well. So I did a lot of drinking, for sure. I did have a stent with drugs, uh, mainly pills. If I was drinking or I was high, I wasn't angry. I didn't want to be angry. I knew I didn't want to be angry. I'm not an angry person. I'm an intense person, but I'm not, I'm not angry. And I knew that me being angry wasn't who I was. It was what I was and what I was betraying. And so the drinking and the drugs and, you know, I even, you know, unfortunately I used women and I would use overworking, uh, you know, I've said before I like to eat, so I, I used eating. Um, so unhealthy coping is really how I coped with it, and none of it helped it. None of it helped it. It masked it, it pushed it off to the side, it made it worse. Um, it got it to its boiling point several times.